I'm going to give you the five things that I wish I knew when I treated my SIBO that I didn't know then, that I do know now, and it changes everything, okay? So let me give you a disclaimer before we even start this video. I'm going to be telling you a lot of information that goes against the, the mainstream treatment narrative for approaching this kind of issue. And the reason that it's quite controversial is it's very different, but myself and many of the people that I work with are usually the people that try the, the mainstream approach and it doesn't work. So the mainstream approach being like antibiotics, antimicrobials, and then doing like four or five different treatments of the same thing, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So I'm gonna give you the, this disclaimer. This is a very personalized problem and it requires a very personalized tailored solution. All of these points, they're gonna work regardless if you've, if you've got a SIBO or any kind of gut infection. These are all gonna be important, but I wanna make it clear that this is not medical advice. I'm not advising you to do anything without speaking with somebody first. Whether that's your naturopath, whether that's your functional medicine practitioner, whether that's a coach. If you wanna talk with me in a bit more detail about this, I'd be happy to do that. But this is so personalized and it's very easy to misunderstand what I'm gonna say. So for example, down here we've got, where have I got it? Probiotics, big yes, okay? That can be misinterpreted. So make sure you, if you're gonna, if you're gonna take anything away from this video, watch the whole thing, you know? Don't just skip around. You need all of the information. It all needs to be used in context. So the first thing that I wish I knew when I started was this, this concept of root cause. So I kind of knew what this is. I kind of knew what this was but I didn't actually do the investigation into it that really needed to be done to actually get me where I wanted to be. SIBO, or any kind of gut infection you have, is never a root cause. And obviously, when I say something like never, there's always that one exception that breaks the rule. But it's probably not you, okay? So there are some people where this is actually the, the root cause. 99, actually I haven't worked with anybody where, it, where this has been the root cause. There's always something else you know? And it usually ties into one of these two things, toxicity or deficiency. So this can be looked at on a purely physical lens. So if you have, um, so I'll, I'll use my situation or, or my, my experience here because I'm really sharing this about what I wish I knew. So I'm going to pull a lot of um, personal anecdotes in this, in this video. For me, the toxicity was physically, it was mold and mycotoxins. If you're exposed to mold, if you're living in a moldy environment, if you're being exposed to mycotoxins on a daily basis, you will have SIBO, CFO, parasites, and it will never go away with, with this kind of antibiotic treatment or antimicrobials if you stay in that environment. It will never go away. It just doesn't happen, okay? You need to be in a place where you're not being exposed to this toxicity anymore if you want the SIBO to shift. So if you're still exposed to this toxicity, so this could be a moldy house, this could be amalgam fillings in your, in your mouth, this could be any type of environmental toxicity. If you stay in that environment, you will not recover, no matter what treatment you do. No matter if you do all of these other points, right? If you do all two, three, four, five, you do all these things, you won't recover, okay? You have to be out, or you have to have resolved that, that toxicity. And then we've got deficiency. So deficiency can look like deficiencies of certain nutrients. So the really common ones that, 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 I'll, that I'll talk about again, because it was a personal thing for me, was um, the, the, methyl, the methyl donor um, nutrients. So things like methylfolate, methylcobalamin, those were nutrient deficiencies that I had. Didn't help following a quite a poor vegan diet before the onset of all of this, that depleted a lot of my nutrient stores. So that, that really didn't help me. But this can be deficiencies of, of anything. You know, this can be deficiencies of stomach acid. This can be deficiencies of digestive enzymes. This can be deficiencies of your microbiome. And the thing is, these two usually play on each other. So, so if you have some kind of defi excuse me, if you have some kind of deficiency, you also have some kind of toxicity that goes alongside it. Because when we're exposed to a toxin, it depletes certain nutrients, which makes the toxicity worse, and then we also have a deficiency, and it works the other way around too. So if you have deficiencies, you're less able to detoxify toxins, so then the toxins accumulate. So usually, they usually go hand in hand. If you've got a deficiency, you also have a toxicity somewhere. This doesn't just work on the physical level as well. So I'm gonna try and keep this more physically orientated, because I feel like it's a lot. I'm, trying to, I'm gonna try to completely shift your perspective on solving this problem 
but I know you can only shift your head so much in, in one video, you know? So I'm not gonna to talk too much on the emotional side of things just yet, but this can, be, this can be emotions too. If you have, if you're in a toxic environment, if you're in a narcissistic, manipulative relationship, if you're in an abusive environment, it's not gonna go away. I know you say, oh, but it's a physical problem. It doesn't matter. There's, there's no distinction between physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. If you have damage on one, if you have an illness in one, you have damage in all. So if you've got a deficiency of love, if you've got a deficiency of your own personal power, if you're missing any of that, the, the, the thing will persist, okay? You need to fix those things, not just physically, but emotionally too. I'm not going into that too much. So that's the first point. You have to find the root cause. If you don't build your healing protocol around the root cause of your illness, you're just running around in circles trying to trying this thing and that thing and this thing and that thing, and the root cause is still there. You still haven't fixed the root cause. So for me, I had five root causes, you know, and that might sound a little bit unfair, but that's just the cards that I was dealt, you know, and you have to, you have to deal with it, you have to figure it out. So the SIBO, in my case, was an adaptive response to help me survive in my environment. I had the, the physical mold exposure, I had a poor diet, I had medications. Obviously, when I have these kinds of things, I think, oh, let's go to the doctors, they'll help. So then I get prescribed the herbs and the antibiotics. It makes everything worse, you know, because the SIBO in this case is an adaptive response. It's your body trying to help you survive in a toxic or deficient environment. And when you kill your body's adaptation, obviously you feel worse. And this, doing this treatment approach of antibiotics and killing herbs, we're gonna talk about this more in, in detail down here. Doing this approach m moved me from having SIBO and being like quite chronically ill to disabled. When I did these killing protocols with herbs and with antibiotics, I developed chronic fatigue syndrome, I developed arthritis, I developed suicidal depression, anxiety, panic attacks. This is not, I, I, I don't like to be too polarizing in my videos. I always think there's a place for everything, but I, I hate this, okay? I hate killing protocols. They, they're so ineffective. They're coming at this, this problem, not understanding the root of it because you're just treating the symptoms still. And even, with alternative and functional medicine, they're saying like, hey, well, we're gonna do it in a more natural way. But if you're still not looking at the root cause, you're still just treating the symptom. And the SIBO, the SIBO, the gut infection, the parasite, the CFO, whatever it is, it's always an adaptive response. It's always a downstream problem. It's always a symptom. It's never the thing right at the top. N never, okay? I've never seen it. I'm sure there's one person out there, but it's probably not you, okay? You probably don't fit into that category. It's, it's probably not the root cause in your case. As I said, I've done this myself, done this with probably nearly a thousand people now. It's never the root cause, okay? So look for the root cause somewhere else. So as I said, I had five. Mold toxicity was one. I had a nerve subluxation in my neck. So this is deficiency of nerve supply. So it fits into the deficiency category, into my gut and digestive system, and stuff like that. Poor diet, medication, emotional trauma. So all five of those things set me up for my big chronic health decline. And SIBO was an adaptive response to try to help me survive. And when I treated the SIBO by trying to kill it, everything just got worse. So find the root cause, okay? Forget everything you're doing. Like before you even do any of the rest of this stuff, figure out what the root cause is or you're just gonna be stuck forever, okay? And I don't want you to be stuck forever. I want you to get, to get healed, you know? You can do it, I've, I've done it. I've seen hundreds of people do it. You can do it, but you're never gonna do it if you don't know the root cause, okay? So focus there, that's where your effort should be. Once you figure the root cause out, start to build your treatment protocol around the root cause and then begin to do these things as well. So, point two, we've got digestive support. So I'm gonna talk about this in the context of the five pillars. This is a, an educational course that I've already created. I call it the five pillars because these are the five primary core functions of the digestive system. If your gut, if you have any gut condition, and I mean literally any gut condition, so if this is like SIBO or some kind of gut infection, if this is constipation, diarrhea, heartburn, reflux, um, leaky gut, like anything, right? If you have any gut condition, I, I guarantee you, again, I've seen this every single time. No, there's not a single person that doesn't fit into having a dysfunction in at least one of these. If, you, if you're in a SIBO situation, it's probably more like two or three. For me, it was five. All five of my five pillars were, were, were struggling, were, were broken and needed support. So we're gonna talk about these in, in just a minute, but I just wanna note that two links down into five. Okay, we're gonna cover this in more detail towards the end. It's worth noting that this is a huge part of digestive support. 
because as you're gonna see here, we've got three supplements. Supplements aren't the cure to this situation, okay? You're not gonna take medication, you're not gonna take antibiotics, you're not gonna take herbs and stuff to actually heal this, that you don't get the solution there. But the right supplements can be really helpful, but it's not everything that is included in digestive support. A lot of it is diet and, and the digestibility of your diet, but we're gonna cover that in its whole own point because it's a big topic to cover by itself. So for now, we're gonna look at the, the five pillars and what they are. So we've got acid, so strong potent stomach acid, digestive enzymes, a sufficient amount of digestive enzymes, bile, healthy bile, okay? It needs to be runny, it needs to be thin, it needs to be non-viscous, it needs to be doing the job that it's supposed to do. Um, strong, powerful, coordinated motility. So this is that peristaltic action that you see in the gut, but you've got this, this wiggly process that happens in the gut. Um, that's a, a coordinated process that needs to be functioning properly, otherwise you're gonna be predisposed to all these different kind of gut problems. And finally, we've got the mucosa. So this is that thin lining that goes, it's one cell thick and it goes all the way through your whole digestive system on all of those little villi. That's the, that's the, the gut lining, that's the mucosa. So if you have any digestive symptom, any digestive problem whatsoever, I mean inclusively, any gut problem, one of these five things will be dysfunctional. I've seen it every single time, okay? One of these five things, and it's probably more, okay? For me, as I said, it was all five. For some people, it's usually two or three. Sometimes it is only one. And if, it, if you're in that, in that point where only one of these pillars has collapsed, when you support it, you feel wonderful very, very quickly. So with, with this in mind, the five pillars, we've got You've got to understand that with different, different pillars being dysfunctional, this is why people present with different digestive disorders, because they have different genetic predisposition weaknesses, they have different metaphysical root causes, they have different, different variables that contribute to different symptom expression, but they're all rooted in the same, the same dysfunction of at least one or more of these five pillars. So if we can figure out, first of all, we can figure out what these are through, through symptomology. If you can, identify which symptoms you have and what pillar they're connected to, you can support these pillars and find really rapid immediate symptom relief. I can remember I worked with, with a client once and he had the same kind of situation going on. He knew that he didn't want to do antibiotics because that's what his doctor had proposed. And he was like, that's not me, you know, that's not, that doesn't feel right to me. So we, we, got, we got talking about this and we, we looked at it through the lens of the five pillars and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not lying here, I'm not joking, this is like deadly serious. Within 48 hours of our first consultation, so we had one consultation, for, and I gave him some, some tips, and we talked about how we can modify the diet and supplementation, so this was really all point two and point five. So changing the way that he's eating and changing the digestive support, within 48 hours his digestive symptoms had decreased by 80%. So this characteristic like, pregnant belly thing, you know, where your belly is just protruding out and you look pregnant. And it's even worse if you're a man, right? Because <laughs> you know you're definitely not pregnant. For him to have that one, like one day, and then two days later to have a flat stomach, that shows you that something massive has changed, you know? And we didn't, we didn't kill the SIBO. We didn't starve the SIBO. We didn't, we didn't do anything apart from support the digestive function. Because as I mentioned before, the SIBO is an adaptive response. So if you, make, if you change the environment in the gut, if you change the function of the digestive system so that the SIBO as an adaptive response is no longer required, it goes away. That's the truth for all symptoms. All symptoms are an adaptive response. So if you change what's happening inside the body so the adaptive response is no longer required, the symptom disappears because your body is intelligent and it doesn't need to do the symptom anymore. So we literally achieved like 80% symptom re resolution in two days, you know, 48 hours. And th this isn't uncommon. This, ha this can happen a lot, especially if you're, you're doing the exact wrong things to support the five pillars. So let me walk you through, I'm gonna talk a little bit about supplementation for each of these, and then we're gonna move on to the next point because supplements aren't everything, okay? But so for the, supporting these, before you try any like gut killing protocol, before you try antibiotics, before you try anything like that that's really harsh and in my opinion, not actually very effective, try to figure out which of your five pillars is struggling and support them. So with acid, the best supplement for this is betaine HCL. Not everybody can use this, especially if you have gastritis, probably not a good idea. You can try things like apple cider vinegar or different types of acidic foods, lemon, that can be more than enough. 
especially if we're looking at like a kid, like a child with a SIBO expression, using a betaine HCL supplement can be quite strong and it's really hard to dose. So instead we can use natural foods if, if they're well tolerated. Things like apple cider vinegar and lemon, it does, it does the same job, okay? Um, next with, digest with enzymes, you've got digestive enzymes, pretty obvious supplement there. Digestive enzymes can be really good, you know? They can really help with a lot of things out of the digestive system too. So if you're somebody that's presenting with gut and digestive discomfort, but then you also have brain fog, uh, fatigue, poor exercise recovery, slow wound healing, all of those things you could benefit from, from having some, some enzymes. So digestive enzyme can be really helpful there. Lifestyle factor that can help, juicing. Juicing is awesome for this. Bile, life, lifestyle factor, juicing also really helpful for this. Bile's kind of tricky to talk about in a video like this because it's such a, a, a nuanced and complicated topic. So I, I'm gonna, gonna gloss over it today. The reason bile is so important is it's how your body detoxifies all of the fat soluble toxicity. So if up here we've got We've got toxicity is one of the root causes. If the toxins are being excreted in the bile and your body isn't able to decouple the toxin from the bile appropriately, SIBO will develop to do this process for you. So the SIBO, in this case, adaptive response, is helping your body to decouple the toxin from the bile acid so then it can be removed in the stool. And then obviously when you kill the SIBO, you stop this happening, you increase toxicity and you feel worse as a result. So making sure that we support bile can be, be really helpful. Sometimes it's as simple as like an ox bile supplement. What I find is more important is looking at the general liver health and supporting the liver. That's very personalized, that's very unique. Everybody's different as always, but that's something that's kind of hard to comment on. Motility, really hard to supplement for. I don't really find medication or um, supplements helpful for this, I find that this is usually rooted in, in, in trauma, okay? So one of the things that happens when we get stuck in a fight, flight, freeze nervous system state is motility just either stops and you get constipated, you get gastroparesis, you get low motility, or if you get stuck in flight, your, your, your bowel is just evacuating all the time and you're having like diarrhea all the time. So th I would say this is really a trauma route. So looking to the trauma side of things there and uh, mucosa. Most important thing for the mucosa is the probiotics and the composition of the microbiome. These organisms literally orchestrate the, the repair of new cells, the breakdown of old damaged cells. They're like the builders that live inside your gut. The, the gut repair process is coordinated by the right microbiome. So if your microbiome is off, you're gonna really struggle with, with healing the mucosa, like whatever you do. You can do broth, you can do glutamine, it's not gonna make much difference. The microbiome needs to be fixed. Because the microbiome is, what repairs it and the microbiome is also most often what damages it the most. So sorting that out is, is really, really important. So that covers number two. On to number three. So we've got supplements. So good supplements. These are the ones we just listed. Using, supporting the five pillars. So the five pillars is based on a foundation of a healthy microbiome. So a probiotic would also come in here, but we've got, we've got probiotics here. It's a whole topic for itself. So we're going to talk about that in more detail. So the supplements I would not recommend are like antibiotics and herbs and doing killing protocols. I did round after round. I did like, I did neem, I did allicin, I did oil of oregano, I did biocidin, I did grapefruit seed extract. I, I literally did everything, okay? I did metronidazole, I did neomycin, I did rifaximin, I did like loads of different antibiotics and stuff. It just made me more sick, okay? I see this over and over again with the people that I work with. It, it, it doesn't work, okay? For some people it does, and most of the time it comes back. Because again, SIBO is an adaptive response. So figure out what the root cause of the problem is and fix it there. If you're working on fixing the root cause and then you support the digestive system and its dysfunction using supplementation for the five pillars, not only are you gonna have symptom relief, so you're not gonna have the digestive discomfort to the extent that you have been having it, but you're also fixing the root cause, which means when the SIBO goes, it's actually gone for good, and tip, unless it needs to come back again as an adaptive response. And, and then in that case, you would want it to come back because it's making you as healthy as possible. So that's my two cents there. I'm not a fan of antibiotics for this. I'm not a fan of herbs and killing protocols. Herbs that can be beneficial for this are ones that are actually working with your body. So we're not trying to kill the microbiome, but we're trying to strengthen the body. So things like things that stimulate the immune system, things that, um, work to improve like adrenal health, so like, like ashwagandha or adaptogenic herbs, they can be really helpful. Um, even s smelling like um, lavender essential oil can help to calm the nervous system down, like stuff like that. That's the, that's the right use of herbs. Using herbs to try and kill your microbiome is not gonna work, okay? Just, just doesn't work. Don't like it, not a fan of it. 
doesn't work. So now for probiotics, we've got big yes, okay? The way that you resolve this kind of situation, a SIBO, a parasite, these kinds of things, is you need to just, I don't even like the label SIBO, okay? It's a really horrible diagnostic label because inherent in the name SIBO is an overgrowth that you think you need to reduce. So the treatment protocol of killing herbs and antibiotics is kind of an inherent response to hearing SIBO as a diagnostic label because you hear overgrowth, you think you have to kill. So I want you to just take that idea of SIBO and just remove that from your brain. You know, just get it out of your head. SIBO is a horrible diagnostic term. Change that term for the word dysbiosis, okay? So this means an imbalance in the microbiome. If instead of trying to kill, kill, kill your gut, you work to try to restore balance to the microbiome, that is where you will find healing from this kind of problem. That is where you find true lasting resolution without flare-ups, without relapses. It's finding that balance. It's restoring the balance to the microbiome. And this is why probiotics are a big yes, because how the hell are you gonna restore a microbiome if you don't take probiotics? You know, and this is, this is in the, so uh, if, you're, if you're watching this and you've got this far, you probably know a lot about SIBO already, right? Because you're, you're, you're this far into the video. You're not gonna be listening to this if, you're, if this isn't a thing you're, you're really interested in. So one of the treatment models is the four R's. So it's like remove, um, repair, something restore okay and they're killing healing and then they're adding the probiotics back at the end i li i literally guarantee you the reason that this 4r model works is nothing to do with the killing protocol at the beginning working on the the restore is restoring the five pillars and then the r at the end is rebalance and, and restore the microbiome that's it so it's doing this and the probiotics the killing part is unnecessary it actually doesn't help it just makes things worse okay so forget that Anything that antibiotics and herbs can do, probiotics can do better, okay? Probiotics are living. They're, they're, they're enzyme factories. They're antibiotic factories. They create antifungal compounds. They create hydrogen peroxide. They create all of these different things that cause balance in the digestive system. So anything a herb or an antibiotic can do, a probiotic can do better because it's working to restore the balance instead of just killing it and bringing everything down. We're restoring the balance there. So big yes. But again, this is what I'm saying, don't take this out of context. If you're gonna do this, but you're not gonna support the five pillars, so you, you have low stomach acid and your bile is all nasty and full of toxins and your mucosa is really weak, taking probiotics can make things worse, okay? So you have to make sure you're doing it in the right context where you're supporting the body's digestive function. So just as these are the things that help your body digest food, these are the things that help keep your gut clean. Bile is like soap. It's an emulsificant, it, it destroys bacteria. Acid destroys bacteria. Enzyme breaks down biofilms. Motility moves things to the right place. Mucosa is the seat of 80% of your immune system. So if one of these is dysfunctional, taking probiotics can, can be risky. You know, it cannot be the right thing to do. And probiotics is such a big category as well. You've got like lactobacillus and bifidobacterium probiotics. You've got the yeasts like Saccharomyces boulardii and cerevisiae. You've got the soil-based organisms. It's, it really has to be looked at in context. You have to figure out what's right for you. What I find is the most well tolerated is usually a, a blend of, of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. I really like the brand Custom Probiotics. And if you have histamine problems, I'll start on the delactate free formula because it's histamine free. And if you don't have histamine problems, I go to the 11 strain formula. But again, I can't tell you exactly what to do, right? Because I don't, I don't know if you're doing these things first. So you have to make sure you're doing it all right at the same time. So probiotics, big yes. I, I literally haven't seen somebody heal, he, heal SIBO without a probiotic. I just don't think it, it really, it's really possible, you know? You need to make sure that you have the right microbiome and if you're not, if you've destroyed them or if they're not present and if you're in a SIBO situation you, or you clearly have dysbiosis, it's gonna be really hard to restore that balance without a probiotic. And finally, we've got diet and digestibility. So this really ties in again to point two of digestive support, but we're gonna go into more detail about how we can actually do this with the actual diet itself. So the most important thing to understand is, is you don't have to do like a restrictive diet, okay? You don't have to necessarily do GAPS or low FODMAP or, or low histamine or what, whatever it is. You have to make sure that what you're, able, what you're eating, you're actually able to digest and absorb. That is what is important. And the reason that a lot of these healing diets work is because they, they're doing that. 
but it's not that this diet is better than this diet that's better than this diet. The right diet for you is the one that you're able to break down, digest and absorb the most, okay? That's the principle that's important. Not the diet, not the label, not what it is, the fact that you're actually able to eat it, break it down, digest it and absorb it. That's what's important. So one way we can do this is with food combining. So we combine foods in a certain way that it makes it easier for your body to digest the food. So some examples, so these, this food combining component ties directly in with these five pillars and, and literally everything does, right? Because these are the five primary core functions of the digestive system. So anything you're doing is gonna have a direct impact, impact on these. So one really good example would be like, if we're looking at uh, food combining and we're gonna look at the acid pillar, one of the best things you can do to support your stomach acid is to just simply not drink extra liquid with your food. Because every time you drink liquid, you dilute your stomach acid. So that's a dietary change you can make that can support this pillar a lot. And that's a really, really simple thing to do. It doesn't mean don't drink, it just means don't drink with your food. Um, and another example would be, the enzymes that your body requires to break down starch and protein cannot activate at the same time. They have, one of them has a pH range up here, another one has a pH range down here. So one of them's working or, or the other one's working. They can't both work at the same time. So if you eat protein and starch in the same meal together, you're putting extra work on the digestive system. It doesn't mean you can't do it necessarily if your gut can handle it, you know? I'm at the point past, past all of this, I just had a baguette with chicken in it, you know? That is, starch with protein and it's fine i can digest it no problem because my body can do it can swap back and forth between the digestive processes very easily now because it's it's strong enough but if you're trying to make it do this and it doesn't have the strength part of the food goes undigested and then the SIBO develops to break the food down for you because you're not digesting it properly so make sure that whatever you're eating you can digest you can break down digest and absorb and use it to fuel you instead of making you ill Next, we've got the concept of digestive capacity. So this is gonna reflect in primarily how much you're able to eat, especially in one meal. So when your digestive system is weaker, you can't handle so much food in one go. You say you can only absorb up to 1,000 calories worth of food. If you eat 1,200, those are the 200. You, not only can you not digest, they're actually gonna go through the gut and feed SIBO and pathogens and it's, it's, it, they're doing that because you're eating food you can't digest, okay? So the, the problem isn't that they're eating it, the problem is that you ate it in the first place when you couldn't digest it. So you have to make sure that you're eating within your digestive capacity. And you'll, you'll be able to find this because your symptoms will be way less when you're eating in your digestive capacity. And figuring out where your digestive system is weak and supporting the respective pillar will improve your digestive capacity there. So we can see big improvements in digestive capacity through correct supplementation with the five pillars. And finally, we've got pre-digestion. So anytime you eat food that has been prepared in a certain way that makes it easier for your digestive system to break down, digest, and absorb, you're taking that work off of your gut so that it doesn't have to do it. So the example that I like to use is think of the difference between eating a raw carrot and a boiled carrot. It's very, very different. Think about a raw chicken breast versus a fried chicken, chicken breast versus a chicken breast that's been boiled for six hours. The chicken breast that's raw is, you can't pull it apart with your hands, it's really stringy and tough. The roasted one comes apart a bit easier and the one that's boiled, you pick it out of the water and it just falls apart. And the same's gonna happen in your gut. So the more broken down the food is before you put it in your gut, the less work your gut has to do. So the way you cook your food is really important. Things like smoothies and, and blending food to make soups can be really helpful. This is one reason the elemental diet is a great treatment for SIBO is because it's making the food as pre-digested as possible. So the weak digestive system is able to digest everything, which means the SIBO doesn't need to be there anymore because the SIBO is an adaptive response. You're gonna get so bored of me saying that by the end of the video. The SIBO is an adaptive response to help you survive in your current environment. And once you've changed the diet to something you're able to fully break down, digest and absorb, you don't need SIBO anymore. So it goes away by itself without treatment, okay? So wrapping this up. So let me, let me give you two takeaways here. So the five pillars is a, an educational course that I have. If it's something you're interested in, in watching and learning more about the functions of these, these, these five pillars, like what they, what they are, how they work in the body, what the functions of them are, the symptomology behind 
whether like if they've broken and w what we can derive we can do based on wh which symptoms are struggling i gave you a little preview by giving you a few a few supplements but there's there's a lot more to it you know like i said especially in the bile and the motility so if you're interested in that course just let me know i can send you some more information i'll actually give a link in the in the comments in the description in the the, the little box below so if you want to learn more about the five pillars it's like a self-study course seven part series Really good. Anyone that has a digestive problem, I just send them there because any if you have a digestive problem, you need to know this. If you have a digestive problem, just knowing this is going to put everything else into context. Whatever diet it is you choose to follow, like it, you need to know this information. I, I think everybody needs to know this, even if you don't have a digestive problem. It's how your gut works, and you really should know how know know how it works so you can support it when it when it needs a little bit of extra help. And finally, I want to say root cause. Okay. All of this, all of this that I said, completely unnecessary if you don't know what the root cause is. So figure that out, okay? If you don't, fi if you don't figure out the root cause and you don't build the protocol around fixing the root cause, none of this is going to do anything. You might get some symptom improvement, but it's not going to go away. So you need to figure out what the root cause of these problems is and build your protocol around it. If you don't know what your root cause is or if you need some help investigating into it, this is something I can help you with. I offer a call called a root cause consultation that is literally designed to do exactly that, to help you discover what the root cause of the problems is. And then once we know what the actual cause of the problems is, a solution kind of becomes obvious because it's, it's basically just a mathematical equation. If you understand what's on the, you, you know what's on the equal side because obviously you have some kind of disease. So then we just need to derive from that what the other variables are on the other side of the equation. And figuring that out, we can figure out what we need to do, what we need to change, how the body is asking for help, so we can make the disease disappear and how we can make the symptoms go away. And it really is as simple as that. It can sound really simple. Simplicity is the highest form of sophistication, right? So it is simple, but you have to really know what you're looking for and you have to make sure you actually find the real root cause. So, so wrapping this up, if you, if you have a SIBO, if you have a gut infection, if you have parasites, CFO, any of that, IMO, it's not the root cause. You have some other problem going on higher upstream. It's a symptom. Figure out what the upstream problem is and you'll find the solution to, to your problem. It's solvable. I've solved it. I've seen lots of people solve it as well. You can heal from this. You just have to make sure you're doing the right stuff. So now I'm going to take some questions. So let's see what we've got. So I'm doing questions now. Let me know if you have any questions. Rico says, but how do you heal all, how do you heal all your body if First got severe candida and now also developed SIBO and mold. I don't know what I can eat anymore and my bowels are not moving. I'm starving myself literally for weeks. So in this case, with the things that you've described, you said candida, SIBO, mold. Mold is the root cause here. You, the, the candida and the SIBO are symptoms that have developed from being in mold, from being exposed to mycotoxins. So to fix that from a root cause perspective, you have to be out of that environment. Mold was one of the things for me as well. It was one of my big root causes. I only was able to manage my symptoms so much I wasn't, by doing this stuff, you know? So I didn't know about this root cause, but I was doing these things. This is where I learned this stuff was because I was trying to, trying to heal. But I didn't see the healing that I really wanted until I actually got out of the environment because that was one of the root causes. So my heart really goes out for you, Rico. I, I really understand where you've been. I've been there. Um, bowels not moving. I've been there weeks constipated, starving yourself for weeks. I've been there as well. I kind of even developed an eating disorder through all of this. So yeah, I, I really relate to where you're at. I really get where you are. But my, my biggest, my biggest insight for you would be you have to relocate. You're not going to be able to heal and involve the environment. It just, it just doesn't happen. You know, I, I just don't see it. Great question. Though. Thank you. Thank you for the, for the question. So Liz, Liz Brown says, did you try a biofilm disruptor? I did, didn't make much of a difference. Again, your, your body, all of this is, that's happening in your gut is actually happening for you. It, they're, they're not the problem, they're the adaptive response. When you support all of this, these five pillars, so when you've got enough enzymes and all of this stuff, any biofilms, you will be able to, your body will be able to break through. If it really gets to the point where you've, you've done all of this stuff, you've taken probiotics, none of, none of that's working, you can look at something called bioresonance. It can really help you identify pathogenic organisms that you have. It can cut straight through biofilms. It, it doesn't care about biofilms because they're conductive. 
you can get it through biofilms, but it's probably not the problem, okay? I really don't think biofilms is, is, the, is the big issue in, in most cases. If, you, if you're doing the five pillars properly, if you're supporting all of this, and it's not going away, it's probably not a biofilm issue, it's probably, probably something else. Liz also says, uh, Billy, probiotics make me feel so sick. How long do you think it takes to turn, around, turn things around so I don't feel sick? This is a, this is a, really, good, a, really, good, a really good sign they're actually working, you know, that they're actually helping. So when you take probiotics, it's not the probiotics themselves that make you feel, feel bad. It's the interaction between the probiotics, and if, if we're talking the probiotics that I mentioned earlier, right, the D-lactate-free formula or the 11-strain probiotics, these are, these are built based on the microbiome of different stool samples that were collected from many different ancestral cultures all the way all through Earth. So the Inuit in Alaska or, or wherever they're from, the North Pole, I don't know, I really should probably know that. So from Europe, Italy, I think they're called green zones, this is where people live a really long time and they've got really unaltered gut flora. So they're not exposed to antibiotics and pesticides and things that disrupt the flora. And they all have these species. There's 17 species of Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium that are present in every single healthy gut on Earth. So when you're taking a probiotic that contains these things, it literally can, it's not possible for it to be these organisms that are making you sick because they're in every single healthy person on the planet. It's these organisms fighting with the organisms that you have present in your gut right now. And it's those organisms dying that makes you feel sick. And it's not even necessarily because of the organisms, more likely it's because of the organisms are holding, they've accumulated toxicity because that's what they're there for. They're trying to help you survive. They've accumulated toxicity, and when they die, they release that toxicity, which can then be reabsorbed, especially if the mucosa hasn't been properly healed and it's still, there's still a lot of permeability happening in the gut. So taking probiotics and feeling worse is actually a really good sign. It means they're working. You just need to stick with it at a dose that you can tolerate. So for me to get to a therapeutic dose, it literally took me three years, okay? Three years. This isn't like just snap your fingers and get healed, you know? Three years of... Every time I would take them, I would have horrible gut pain. I would have suicidal depression. It would flare up my histamine symptoms. I would feel awful, okay? It was a process of sticking just below where it was tolerable and going as fast as I could. And as I say, it took me three years. So it's something that takes time and it's something you just have to be persistent with. It, ta it takes time. You can't just shift your microbiome overnight. And if it's in the state where you have really severe chronic health problems, you probably have a really severely imbalanced gut dysbiosis, which will take some time to correct.